Hey guys, welcome to the video. So today I'm going to be chatting with you all about one of the most beloved music festivals in the United States, which is Okeechobee. So this is a camping festival that takes place March 3rd through the 6th in Sunshine Grove, Florida. Uh, this is actually the fifth anniversary of the festival and it is now run by Insomniac Events. So uh, it's a really, really cool festival. Today I'm going to be walking you through some of the festival basics, so things you should know especially if you are a beginner, some festival facts. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the stages and do a little bit of a breakdown for you, uh, chat about camping, tickets, all that good stuff. And then towards the end of the video, stick around and I'm going to give you some lineup recommendations. So some of the artists that really stand out to me that I think you guys should check out if you're going to be going. So with all that being said, let's just jump right into the video. So like I mentioned, this is a four-day camping festival. Um, it's an 18-plus event. It is run by Insomniac Events now, so you know you're going to get top-of-the-line production, a uh, really incredible lineup, all that good stuff, usually run very well. Uh, it is a mixed genre festival, so it's still dance music, but you'll get some live acts and other types of genres as well, which is really cool. Um, if you guys need tickets and you haven't grabbed yours yet, I am an Insomniac affiliate, so I do have tickets to Okeechobee, so I will put those down below in the description box if you guys want to buy through me it means a lot so thank you for your support on that uh, but moving on to festival facts so the entire theme around Okeechobee is be here now it's all about being like fully present in the moment celebrating life celebrating music coming together it's community dancing creating um I do really like that they have a big emphasis on art with this festival, which I think is really cool. Uh, a lot of yoga as well, but it gives me more of a transformational type vibe and like arts and wellness style festival, which is really cool as opposed to just a massive rave or, you know, like electronic festival. I've heard so many good things, I will say. I've never attended myself. Unfortunately, it's on my bucket list. But anybody I talk to who has gone, like their face always lights up when they talk about this event and they say the vibes are like really, really immaculate. So, so I got to give it up to all of them. Um, it does sound like it's an incredibly well-run event. I will say the setting looks gorgeous as well. Like it is in Florida, so you're gonna have beautiful weather for the most part, but they've got this like lake, which has this beachy area with sand. They've got beautiful palm trees, which some of the stages are like built amongst the palm trees, which is like very vibey. So the setting itself actually looks super gorgeous, but I do wanna break down the stages for each of you now. So originally in past years, Be Here Now were each at their own stage and those were kind of like the main stages, I would say. So B, I've heard um, just according through friends, people who have gone, Reddit, B is sort of like the main stage, which has mixed genres. Here, um, also a bigger stage and had a lot of EDM. Now is interesting. So it used to be a secondary main stage, but according to the website, it's no longer on the site as a stage. And I've been reading a lot of Reddit threads and a lot of people have been saying the same thing that it looks like the now stage was removed. So I'm not 100% sure, but it's not on the website right now. So we don't have the festival map yet, but that used to be a main stage as well. Um, you also have the Aquachobe Beach, which was like what I mentioned. It's in that area by the lake, which has the sandy area. This has a lot of day parties. Um, you'll probably get some more like up and coming artists there, but uh, it's not like crazy huge production or anything like that, but still like really fun vibe during the day. You also have Jungle 51, which looks so fucking cool from all the photos and videos. So this has been described as like a trippy techno house stage um, with like disco balls and lasers. And this is the one that's in like the middle of the palm trees. So I would definitely be living at this stage. This would be my vibe. Uh, this goes all from like dusk till morning. So it's a later stage, but I think the vibes here would be really immaculate. Then there was an area called Lost in Tea, which I believe was more in like the trees and the sandy area. And people have said that there were some more like indie and acoustic art Artists that played over here this was a much like smaller area uh, the other stage was the incendia so think like a lot of fire a lot of pyro um, bass music funk 
uh, some secret sets I've heard as well. So you might get some smaller acts on this stage, but I've also heard like some really big artists have done some surprise sets. So uh, those are all really cool things. There's also an area called Pow Wow as well, which looks to be more of like a live act area. So that seemed really cool as well for like any bands and things like that playing. But that's kind of the breakdown of the stages. Again, artwork. Um, Insomniac does a really good job of this at a lot of their festivals. They have a lot of art installations that are really cool. It's like a part of the festival culture, but it adds to the overall experience and the arts is a really big part of Okeechobee. So I love seeing that. Um, you'll have like local artists there, but it's just really beautiful, you know, pieces of artwork that really add to the overall atmosphere of the area. So I do love that. Again, I do love this like lake or beach kind of thing that they have going on as well. Um, I think that looks really gorgeous. And again, the setting in Florida, like I just feel like it adds to the overall experience, especially it being a camping festival. I believe campers are allowed to arrive on Thursday, so you do have an extra day if you guys want to get there early and enjoy that Thursday. It also said they have this thing called the Chobi Wobi Village where they offer workshops, classes, art, yoga, and there are vendors there as well. So again, if you're camping, you are going to have stuff on site um, available to you just to enhance your camping experience. So let's chat ticket pricing. So right now, tickets are still on sale. You have GA and you have a couple options for GA. So you have the GA Eco Pass, um, which is entry through the portal and a spot in the campgrounds. Uh, right now it's on tier three pricing. It's $309 plus $75 fees. Um, there's a four day with a car camping pass. That's $359 plus $85 fees. And then there's a four day GA lakeside plus a car camping pass. So lakeside, I think you have better. It's a premier spot for your camping. That's um, $899 plus $105. And then VIP, VIP, you have the four day eco, which is the most basic, $749 plus $100 fees. VIP with car camping, $799 plus $110 fees. And then four day VIP lakeside, which I believe is just like an even more elevated experience with the premier spot. That's $1499 plus $150 fees. So just wanted to mention that to you guys. Obviously, like multiple people um, can stay. So you can figure out how you're going to split up your campgrounds and stuff like that. But you can bring your own camping like tents and all of that, which is really nice. So I wanted to quickly read some of the activities they had because I thought this was really cool. There's a thing called Yoga Chobi, which again, um, overall, just having your mental health and physical health being taken into consideration. They do have yoga classes and things like that. Meditation. They have a healing sanctuary, which sounded really cool. Um where you can focus on, again, being present, being calm, being in flow with yourself. Uh, they do have showers on site, I believe, which you have to purchase tokens for. Um, and then lastly, some camping tips I would recommend. I haven't done like a full-blown camping festival, so I'm not like the expert here, but I did just do Camp EDC. So I will recommend putting something on your tent to make it really recognizable to you. So whether that's lighting or... Um, flags or a totem or something like that especially when there's so many tents it will make your life easier so you'll be able to find it easy um, and then I also just made a free festival camping or camping festival checklist so you can download it it's totally free it's like four pages long so you guys don't forget anything but you can um, get access to the free download down below if you guys want that camping festival checklist uh, for your packing list all right, I think that's pretty much everything on the festival. I want to dive into the lineup here and just give you some recommendations before I let you guys go. Um, so again, there's a lot of artists on here that I don't recognize, which to me is intriguing because why not go out of your comfort comfort zone and explore some new artists? But um, immediately Porter Robinson jumps out. He just put out a new album and I think that'd be a really special set. So that one would be pretty cool. Megan Thee Stallion would be fucking fire. <laughs> I feel like I would absolutely love that. Rez, I love Rez. She also just put out a new album. So she's gonna be playing a lot of her new music, which is cool. And like Rez for me, sometimes her sets can sound similar, but in other times I really, really enjoy them. It's just like very heavy music so sometimes you have to be in like the right headspace for that um 10 out of 10 recommend seeing grizz oh my god what a wonderful human being very funky bass music he plays saxophone live like woof he is a good time um so i really love him highly recommend troy boy if you guys 
if you want to get pregnant up in the club, you got to go see Troy Boy. <laughs> like he's just so fine, but his music is so fire, like more trap, just like oof, it's very sexy. So definitely recommend Troy Boy. Uh Jai Wolf also, I feel like um has a really good vibe as well. He's like he he kind of puts me in my feels when I see uh Jai Wolf. So I like him. Uh Closey, I would highly recommend. Uh for House, Dombreski and Elderbrook are next to each other here. I'd recommend both of them. Dombreski is a little bit more like uplifting house music. He is so high energy. He's such a happy human being. So his sets reflect that. And then Elderbrook is a little bit more deep house, I would say. Melodic house. Uh, haven't had the chance to see him yet, but I love his music. It's really, really good. So if you like more of that like melodic, chiller house vibes, highly recommend um, going to see Elderbrook. Who else do we have on here? 1788L is a really cool electronic artist I'd recommend. Um, of the Trees, I believe, is a little bit more experimental bass. Uh, so I think that would be an interesting artist to see. And then getting down here into the undercard, we have Vanessa is probably one of the best emerging house artists. Uh, she's more associated with the Dirty Bird label, but she's just like a really interesting tech slash electronic um, house artist. So I like her. Kayvon for melodic bass. Can't go wrong with him. Um, who else do we have here? Chloe Calais, I believe, is really an interesting artist. Um, Mize is another one to have your eyes on. Who else is on here? Honey Love was one of my artists to watch in 2022. I think we're going to see her name on a lot more lineups. She's a really, really good up and coming house artist. So have her on your radar and don't sleep on her. Um, and then at the very bottom here, I don't recognize a lot of these names. So I'm going to do my research and go check some of these out. But overall, you have a lot of good options. You have some house. You've got a lot of bass music on here, a little bit of experimental. You've got some bands on here. So so it will be a really nice mix if you guys are planning to go. I think you'll there's something for everybody on this lineup. Um, and again, you can also base it like on each stage. So go check out that Jungle 51 stage if you want like some house and techno thrown at you or, you know, hang out a main stage if you want to see some of the bigger acts. But explore, 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 have fun. Get yourself out there, check out new stuff, enjoy the camping experience, um, download the free camping packing list down below, and again, grab your tickets down below too if you guys need tickets still for Okeechobee, but I hope you enjoyed this festival guide. Um, give it a thumbs up if you did. It lets me know you want more festival guides like this. Um, yeah, leave me a comment down below too, you guys. If there's other festivals you really want some information on, more than happy to make a video about it so just let me know um i am attending ultra music festival this year so i will have more videos coming out about ultra it's been a minute i haven't attended since 2017 so it's gonna be a very different experience now five years later but i'm happy to share information on it so stay tuned for that but um if you guys enjoyed this please subscribe to my channel tell a friend share a link with someone today and other than that i hope you guys have an incredible week this week and i will see you in my next video bye guys Fall into you.